if I can ask Sanjay Mehta, the founder and managing partner of S1 uh, Capital, to also join us here up on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, um, good morning, salam alaikum. Seems like the Arabic coffee has not yet kicked in. Um, didn't see the enthusiasm that I was looking for. <laughs> um, but by the way, talking about Arabic coffee, I love Arabic coffee. I think to some extent it optimizes Abu Dhabi to a large extent. This, the enthusiasm of these people down here that I can notice. I haven't been to Abu Dhabi for a while, uh, but it's good to be back. And the aroma of saffron and cardamom in Arabic coffee kind of optimizes some of the hospitality of you people. So very much enjoying here in Abu Dhabi today. Um, look, I'm not going to give you a long speech. I'm in the business of investing. So I love actually the whole energy transition and decarbonization. I think in my lifetime, I have seen two aspects which have been pivotal in the global economy. One is the internet and the digitalization. And I think we are just seeing the second industrial revolution, which is in terms of decarbonization and climate change, which I think is going to have a significant impact in the world GDP growth. So I am not a pessimist about climate change and decarbonization. I'm actually an optimist, and I believe this region has a lots of important decisions to be made, but more importantly, it can be the pivotal change for decarbonization. And I will talk a little bit about it and why I'm so passionate. Some people might wonder, Abu Dhabi is probably the 10th largest oil and gas producer in the world. And I'll, I'll steal the words that Yalda actually at the inaugural speech said. And I'll quote actually uh, precisely what the UN General Secretary said, which is quite interesting. And this is in response to, by the way, so 2023 has been quite a significant year in lots of ways. And one fundamental way, we have seen conflicts, we have seen um, dislocation, uh, we have seen um, uh, trade war, um, and, but one aspect which you might not have heard because um, we in the Northern Hemisphere, where I come from in, in England and in Geneva, we talk about, we like to talk about weather. Generally, I'm just when you talk to any great guy, he will always talk to you about weather first and then ask you, how are you? But more importantly, one aspect about weather, and this is 2023, the global average temperature reached 16.77 degrees centigrade, which was 0.66 centigrade above the 1991 to 2020. So. This is in the Northern Hemisphere during the peak of the summer, the three months we talk about. 16.77 degrees, which was on an average higher by 0.66 degrees centigrade. In last 10 years, we have never seen this before, for the first time. This is a record, by the way. And then you saw lots of news about heat waves, fires, floods, destroyed lives, right from North, South America, Europe, India, Japan, and China. The largest reinsurance claims have been on fire, flood, and risk, which we all pay right from the automobile insurance to your ship insurance. We all pay for that. Um, and to, just to quote Antonio, in response to this um, degree change, he said, scientists have long warned that our fossil fuel addiction and will unleash our fossil fuel, and I'm stressing that word, fossil fuel addiction will unleash. Our climate is imploding faster than we can cope with, with the extreme weather events hitting every corner of the planet. Let me just pause there a bit and say, so why are we here? Talking about decarbonization, why are we here in this city, uh, which this country is probably the 10th largest oil and gas producer in the world, and fossil fuel. Um, it almost sounds oxymoron to have COP28 in Middle East and in UAE, if you think about fossil fuel and decarbonization. And in my view, it's not contradictory. 
but enlightened. The leadership of this country is enlightened, bold, and visionary. Uh, and I've seen, particularly in Abu Dhabi, in terms of the last 20 years, where they've focused it. More, more importantly, I think, if you think about Paris climate change and the accord which has been signed by 193 countries, and 33 of countries of that, including most of the European countries and developing countries, have actually put legislative in, legislation in place to go carbon neutral by 2050, then you wonder what would happen, what would have to happen in order to decarbonization. And that means that effectively by 2050, we need to collapse by 75% the oil and gas consumption by 2050, 75%. And we have to increase fivefold in terms of the renewable energy. Nuclear power would need to double, and the global energy mix has to go 80% towards renewables and 20% to fossil fuel by 2050. That's impossible. We cannot do that. And can, that cannot happen. Hence, in my view, and this is where we spend lots of time thinking about it, where the opportunity of investment lies. In our view, commercial scalability, from commercial scalability perspective, supercharging decarbonization of oil and gas. So we need to decarbonize oil and gas. And that's what this country is doing. Um, supplies is the only credible way, in my view, to bridge achieving the Paris commitment made by 183 countries. We have to decarbonize. The consumer will have a choice. At the end of the day, if you decarbonize oil and gas, it is same, has the same impact as a renewable energy. And the consumer will have a choice of decarbonize fossil fuel energy versus renewable energy. And that's why the enlightened leadership of this country in hosting of COP28 in Abu Dhabi, in my view, is smart. That's the way this world has to go, in my view. I won't bore you too much, but some, some areas, so every year at the start of the year, we, there is a small group of people which McKinsey brings together in, 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 in San Francisco, where we go um, and brainstorm in terms of what is the trend, what is happening, where we are investing, and what are the opportunities. Um, and I'll just tell you how we think about it and how we see the opportunity. Um, it's not about just uh, cost. It's also about the GDP growth. So there will be a few areas that will get impacted, I think. So if you think about net zero, high emission products would see shrinking demand. For sure, we are going to see that. So you need to work towards lowering your emission. And we heard from Etihad Rail, we heard from Abu Dhabi ports, what they are doing. Um, but the uptake of low emission products would create growth opportunities. And I'll just give you a, one idea about how much capital reallocation is happening in this area. And this is not my numbers. This is something that we work with, and this is McKinsey's number. It's about $275 trillion that we have to spend globally to achieve 2050 decarbonization goal in assets over the next three decades. And that number, just, just hear that number, is $275 trillion. If I want to put that in GDP terms globally, you are talking about an increase of GDP growth by 7.5% by 2050. Global GDP growth by 7.5%. And that is going to happen in lots of areas, 
but importantly, the areas that we think is going to have the major impact is decarbonization spending in oil and gas, energy, and infrastructure, which this region is developing. And we think this region is pivotal to decarbonization goals to mitigate the Paris climate change that we have as 194 three countries we have signed up. There will be dislocation, there will be unemployment, there will be in certain industries, but the overall net gain in our view in terms of em employment is in excess of about 150 million new employment jobs being created globally due to efforts of decarbonization. So I'm going to stop there because I know lots of other people are going to speak, but I think as a person who's an investor, we are super excited Glad to be in Abu Dhabi again, and we, we, we are happy to have a great conversation later today. Thank you. And Sanjay, you are just here next to Engineer Malik. Abdullah Hamed Al Hamali, the CEO of um, Economic Cities and Free Zones of Abu Dhabi Ports Group. James Fru, Business Consultancy Director at Lloyd's Register, and they're based uh, out of London. James, if you could sit right next to Sanjay. And Rania Tadros, a partner at uh, Stevenson Harwood, uh, Harwood Dubai office. She's overseeing d the Dubai office and heading the maritime and uh, international trade team for the Middle East. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to allow our speakers uh, to really begin by having some talking points. That's what we'll do for the first 
uh, 45 minutes. Uh, so I'll get them to really put out uh, what they're going to talk about and the issues that they would like to discuss. So, um, Engineer uh, Shadi Malik, if I just get you to, to begin. Sure. Do we, is there, a, if you perhaps make it up to the lectern. Oh, <laughs> Okay, so I'd like to stress uh, obviously that over six months ago we've completed the National Railway Network and launched the freight operations across the UAE. The reality of seeing trains traversing the country today is directly correlated to the vision and leadership of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the UAE president. And our network spans over 900 kilometers, linking all seven Emirates from Ghoifat on the border of Saudi Arabia to Fujairah on the eastern coast of the UAE. This connectivity created by rail is enabling the country's main ports and key industrial logistics centers to serve various sectors and businesses. Today, we are already operating trains between Khalifa port and Fujairah port with a connection to Jabal Ali port very soon. And these connections that we are doing complements also that and integrates five key rail terminals that we have started operating, Ghoifat, Ruiz, Industrial City of Abu Dhabi, ICAD, Dubai Industrial City, and Al Ghail Dry Port. The national network accelerates the growth of trade, industry, and commerce connecting major economic hubs in a way never seen before. This in turn over, offers a wide range of benefits to the in-country customers as it's cost efficient, safer, more reliable, ensures speed to market, and is an environmentally sustainable transport and logistics solution. Not only will customers have access to a new, more efficient mode of transport, but, there, but will also be able to significantly redu 